everybody, it's Robert. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial for you guys today. Um, excuse the big block here. I have a pop filter on my um, H1 so that I don't make a lot of crazy plosive sounds, but um, I wanted to do kind of a walkthrough video. I've done one similar to this before where I showed you how I edit ASMR videos, but I've changed my approach slightly. So um, I want to show you how I do that. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, edit my sound in Audacity, and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and edit the video in Adobe Premiere. If you don't have Adobe Premiere, um, you know, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll try to explain how you would do it in other things. I don't have another program to show you with, but the process is similar. I do prefer, you know, Adobe Premiere or like Final Cut Pro, but you could easily do the same thing with uh, Windows Movie Maker or something like that. Um, the iTunes, iMovie, um, things like that, but it's just a little bit less sophisticated and a little bit more like work. So I'm going to show you how to use Audacity and Premiere to do what I do when I edit my videos. Oh, sorry, excuse the uh, <laughs> recorder software here. Let's get that out of the way. So I'm going to open up Audacity first. And I have my files in here already. I'm going to be editing my Flickr subscription box video. Um, so I have my two audio files from my recorder, which are WAV files. I have my two MOVE files, which are the video. And then these are a few pictures that I took for thumbnails. So we're going to start with the um, audio files. So let's just go ahead and drag the first one into here. Go ahead and make a copy of that. So it's pretty jagged. Um, I'll play some of the unrefined audio. So it's a little bit of white noise. Um, I'm going to try to get rid of that. I intentionally put some about 10 seconds or so of white noise at the beginning of my video to get the white noise out. So I take that blank space there of white noise. I'm going to go up to effect, noise removal, and get noise profile. So what that does is it tells Audacity what the white noise in the room sounds like so that it can try to get rid of it. So now that it has the white noise profile, I'm going to select the entire track go back to noise removal. I'm going to go ahead and leave these at the defaults here and go ahead and press OK. Give it just a few seconds to apply that effect. You're going to see everything um, kind of shrink down a tiny bit, especially in the sections where there's like um, right here, like white noise. It should get a bit smaller and more flat. That's because it's getting some of the hiss out. So it sounds a little bit better there. The description. You can still hear white noise in it, but it's just a little bit um, faded out a bit. So it's very helpful for ASMR recording. So I'd say it's probably the most important skill you can learn in, in Audacity for ASMR video editing. Um, the next thing that I like to do to my videos is apply a compressor compressor, compressor. Um, I'm just using the default compressor, but I did change the settings. I got these settings from um, a subscriber of mine. They suggested these settings. The main things here is I do the threshold at negative 20 decibels, the noise floor at negative 75, the ratio to 2.5. Let me see. I think I yeah, those are about the only settings that, that really matter for me. That's going to make basically bring everything up to a similar level. So my quiet things are a little bit louder, the crinkly things are a little bit louder, and the loud things are a little bit quieter. So let's go ahead and apply that. You're going to see everything blow up a little bit, and that's okay. Um, we're not going to want to use this audio exactly as it is with the compressor applied. Um, we're going to edit it a little bit more after that. 
there we go. So we pure soy wax and flavored with some of the most delectable scents found. And one thing that the compressor does is it really brings out the mouth sounds and crinkly things. Um, so I don't want it to be so jagged. Like there's a few things here, like this is obviously a clip. You can see the um, really tall spike there. So that's kind of jarring and it kind of hurts. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do to get rid of that is effect, normalize. And I like to use negative three decibels. You can use this. Um, you can change it. You can make it higher if you want to. Um, I like to use negative three. So it just brings everything to a level point. You'll see it's probably going to be about here where everything levels off. Right there. So you can see this thing that was loud isn't too loud anymore. Still a bit loud, but it's not clipping the way it was before. So, sounds good. And that's all. That's what I do for every audio file um, with, you know, very few exceptions. So I'm going to go ahead and export this file. Find my Flickr folder. Make sure I'm on 16-bit wave. And go ahead and export that. So I'm going to do the same thing again for the next audio file. I only have two audio files. Um, basically, when I record, I record using the camera. Um, and I record the audio separately. So I record using my my 3DO FreeSpace Pro uh, hooked up to this recorder here, like that. And um, so basically I just start them both at the same time so they're approximately similar and then I line them up later on. So these are the two audio files from my recorder. So let's go ahead and grab number two. And we'll do the same process. I'll go a little bit faster this time. White noise there. Noise is removal, get noise. And once you get this down to a really good um, workflow, you know, I could crank a ton of these out. Like if I had um, 10 of these audio files, it would take me you know, just a few minutes to get through them all. Okay, noise is removed. Now let's compress. My settings are saved in there, so don't have to edit them at all. And let's normalize. just a few places around. Sometimes you never know, like audio can get mangled. Um, it can sound messed up sometimes. I just want to make sure I got the right thing going. Okay, so I have both of my files exported. I don't need to save that because I already exported them. So these two are the updated files. I just went ahead and overwrote them. So now I'm going to open up Adobe Premiere. This is my video editing software of choice, but like I said, you can use whatever you have. I'm just going to show you how I do it in Premiere. With Premiere, the workflow is just so easy for me. Let's create a new project. Make sure I'm in the right folder here. Um, <laughs> this is the video that I'm currently recording. Um, let's see here. That's what I'm looking for. I'm 
I'm just, looks like I gotta update my Creative Cloud billing information. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, I'm gonna import all of these. So these are my two video files and my two audio files. Don't need to worry about the thumbnail pictures for now. One little teeny note when they're imported in like this in the, the little project folder down here. By default, they're all selected together. You're just going to want to deselect them by clicking outside of that because when you drag them in, it'll drag all of them in. And I've had the situation where I accidentally have audio playing or video playing after my video that's edited because I didn't realize it was all the way down at the end of the timeline. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go File. New sequence and sequence. Oops. Oh my god. And then just drag in one of the videos. It's going to ask you if you want to change the sequence. Go ahead and say yes. Depends on what your file type is, but it basically just changes the sequence to conform to whatever file it is that you used. Okay, so here we are. This is the unedited. Um, Video. So you'll hear the audio is very different. Excited for it. Um, this is called Flickr Box. It's not binaural or anything like that. So what we're going to want to do is line that up with the binaural track from the recorder. If you look down here at the timeline, we have um, the blue is the movie, the green is the audio. If you double click right next to it, it'll open up the waveform. So one thing that I do show you, I'll mute this one, and I'll show you, is I do a countdown in a snap or a clap. Two, three. The reason for that is I get this nice little spike there, and that's going to allow me to line up the two clips. So, I'm going to center on that. I'm going to come down here to the seeking bar and drag it to the left so it gets smaller. This is essentially zooming in on the waveform. Just going to start lining these things up. Get as close as I possibly can. That's probably about it. So it's a little bit off, you can hear, but that's totally going to be fine. Um, that little bit of difference is generally imperceptible in ASMR videos. Oh, sorry. I skipped a step while I was doing this. So what I did is I, um, let's go back another step. By default, these are linked together. So I'm going to right click the sound of the video. I'm going to click unlink. And I'm just going to delete that. I don't want the non-binaural camera sound. That's from the onboard microphone. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and drag up the audio that is edited. I'm going to select them both like this. Right click, link. So now these two stay together. Okay. So I'm going to go back down to the seeking bar, drag it out again so I can see the whole picture. And I'm going to find the part where I start talking. Or right there. Um, the shortcut that I'm going to use is the letter C. That's going to give me this cutting tool click right there and it separates this into two different tracks. Now if I press V, like violet, it'll give me my pointer back and all I have to do is click and delete. So now it starts from there. So I can just drag it over, press home to go to the beginning, and there we go. I'm going to come over here to the left and I can go to my effects browser. Um, I do a very similar thing for all my videos. I usually start them with a fade from black. So that is the dip to black effect. Put that on there. And then I'm also going to do a fade in. Um, for these videos, it doesn't really matter too much what fade in you do. So audio transitions, crossfade, is constant gain. 
Hey everybody, it's Robert. I'm back again with another subscription box for you. So there you go. So, um, I know that I didn't make any mistakes during this video, during this take, so I'm gonna just go all the way to the end because I don't need to edit anything out. Um, though at the end here, I did stop because I can hear my wife rustling around outside. You can hear her, like, turn on the bathroom light and talk to the dog. Right there. So I'm going to stop it right there. Right before that. Cut it. Delete it. Challenge hours in the hood will get you far with 24 hours of burn time. So that's it. That's the first part. I'm going to repeat the same process to the second clip. Again, I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. So, dragging it in there. It's the second clip. Dragging in the audio below it. You can line them up by zooming in and dragging them to match. Unlink. Drag the edited file up, link, drag that over, so make sure I'm nice and lined up here. So I was talking about this red one. It looks like I start with that red one here, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a crossfade between the two of those. Go back to my effects browser here. Cross dissolve on the video. Just drag it to the between the two. So it's going to make it do a nice little fade. The sound is a bit different. It's not really constant, so I'm going to also fade the sound using constant power. So looks good to me. So again, I'm going to go fast forward to the end of this one here. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. Okay. So I'm going to try to get as close to the part where I knock the camera as possible. Just so that I can give it some time to fade out. I'm going to cut that. Delete it. So now I'm going to apply the dip to black again to the end. Round it out nicely with a fade in from black and a fade out to black. Do that constant gain. Um, cross fade at the end of the audio. So it'll look like this. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. And that's it. So now I have edited the entire thing. Let me just double check. It's got a nice fade in. Yeah. Looks good throughout. Description. Didn't say that explicitly. Can look for the transition between the two. Four hours of burn time. Alright, let's um, open this one up. Nice smooth transition, and then go back to the end. Double check that. See you later. That's it, we're all good. So, that's going to be going there. Um, I'll do a little bonus for you guys. I'll keep this open in the background before I start exporting. Actually, I'm just going to save this and close it for now. I'll export this later. I'm going to open up Photoshop, and I'm going to work on my um, thumbnail picture for you guys. So, I'm going to start a new file. I'm going to go into the presets here. Film and video. And I'm going to do the size all the way down here at the 1080p resolution. Then I'm going to open. I'm sure I think I can just drag it in. 
see which one of these I want. I'll view these as large icons. I like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit fatter. There we go. Um, and then normally I just put some text over the top of it, something that's really bold that you can see when it's a thumbnail, so. Box. Box. I'll change this text, I just want something there to look at the size. I try not to use the same font for every single one, but I do want to have something that's nice and bold. It's a little bit too rough for this one, I think. Difficult to read. Too gothic. Let's see what that looks like blown up. No, it's going to be hard to read. font is one that kind of resembles like dripping wax. No, it's too much. Really, I could choose any of these, but I'm just kind of doing a little bit of um, trying to find what's just right for this one. Oh, that's trippy. It's like Lord of the Rings. It's kind of nice. Just a solid onyx font. Too jungly. Too blocky. Too funky. Confused. Too plain. Let's see if this will let this see if this will hold up. Really, I can just control T and transform this, holding shift down to preserve the size. So it's pretty unclear, just like that. Let me make it a little bit fatter. And there's a couple things I can do too. That for one, I'm going to control A and select the entire background. I'm going to center this. And then I'm going to do a couple things. I can blur the background slightly, I'll give it kind of a tilt shift so that you can read the text on top better. Good. And then I can put a either um, 
water glow or a stroke around the text. I'm going to go blending options. There's, I could do outer glow, I could do stroke, I can do drop shadow. Drop shadow actually looks pretty good on this one. Let's see what. Uh, if I do outer glow. That's kind of cool. Still a little bit hard to read, I think, from uh, if it's going to be a small thumbnail. If I do a stroke, I kind of like that, actually. stick with that. That'll be, I think, bold enough to read in a thumbnail. Let's find the right folder here, Flickr. To JPEG. Flickr thumbnail. This needs to be under 200k for YouTube. So we're going to keep reducing the quality until that happens. Okay. Then, um, yeah, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to export my video from Adobe Premiere. Just export it as an MPEG 2. I'm not going to do that on screen right now because I want to do some other things and I don't want to be exporting during that. So. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions about this process, and also if you want me to do any other kind of tutorial videos like this.